I have something very exciting to show you, something I've waited to share for a long time. Brought to you in stunning 4K. This is the first 4K video I've ever uploaded to the channel. My Lucas sawmill. 10 inch sawmill. Look at it. Built in Australia and it's I'll tell you what, it's right up my alley. I mean, I, I was impressed with it when I saw it at the trade shows. But spending the day with uh, Nick Bailey was very kind to come up. He delivered the sawmill. Spent the whole day with me, showing me how to use it, showing me tricks and things that I would have taken me years to figure out if I would have figured them out at all. I really appreciated that, and, and it will help me really maximize its potential. An incredibly versatile machine. You know, it's just so Australian. When I think of my Australian friends that I have, you know, the thing that I really admire about them is just they're, they're so utilitarian. They're so practical and, and they're really good about sweeping away things that are irrelevant and just getting down to what works, making it simple and making it work. And that the whole mill, it just has that written over it. When you look at it, it looks, it's, it looks kind of small and, and kind of insignificant. And what you can do with it and the efficiency of it, I mean, it's just staggering. Now, there's a two main mills. If you're talking about a homeowner's you know, type of small business or, or landowner type of mills, you're going to have your bandsaw mills like your wood misers. The wood misers make wonderful mills. I mean, they have a, a great reputation. They make great products. It's kind of a decision between that type of mill and a circular saw mill, which is what you have right here. I'm not going to say which one's better. It's, it's not that simple. It depends on your application and, and what you need. Some of the key features that I needed is I didn't want to have to deal with, with sending out the blades to have them sharpened. I wanted something that I could be more independent, that I could sharpen myself, and that's what we have here. So I'm not going to be cutting today. Uh, we'll do that in the next video or so, uh, but I do want to show you some of the features and talk a little bit about why this was the one that, that I chose. So we have, uh, let's see, I'll pan down here using some new technology. We have your Kohler fuel injected engine. That's nice. But the I want to show you the blade. That's what was so impressive. So you just loosen this wing nut right here, right? And this is a safety cover. This right here is uh, where the sawdust will come out. So it redirects it away from your face. Here we go, got the cover off. We lift this up, we see these are the carbide tipped, the cutting blades. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. There's only five of them. Nick was telling me that uh, if you damage these, these carbide tips, let's say, for example, you, know, you hit a piece of steel and something, and you only have two left, he says it cuts perfectly fine with two. The finish isn't quite as nice, but it'll still work. The thing that appeals to me so much about this is that it comes with, uh, with its own sharpener that mounts right to that bracket right there. I'll bet once I clamp that on there, I could have this thing sharpened in under two minutes. I mean, this is amazing. I can sharpen the thing and, and the whole thing is set up, taking the cover off, putting the saw back into action. I can sharpen it in 10 minutes. No sending bandsaw blades out, you know, none of that. Yeah, I know that there's some people that can sharpen their own bandsaw blades, but for the most part, I think that that is uh, something that's out of reach. So this uh, aspect of it really, really appealed to me. So how the mill works is essentially you have uh, this uh, aluminum beam right here. Uh, with, there's two of those and then the, the whole carriage runs on that track and the most the cleverest thing about it is It's gonna be hard to show it'll all come clear here when we, when we start cutting is your ability to change the angle of the sawmill or change the uh, the angle of the blade without Rotating the wood, you know like on your bandsaw mills you make a cut and then you have to flip the wood so there's all sorts of devices built in to flip the wood some of the smaller ones you have to do it by hand but this one here all we have to do is to grab this lever right here and you see that rotate the whole carriage now check this out check that out now we're cutting on the horizontal plane so what that means for the sawyer is we're cutting both directions. So we're cutting, we're pushing, we're cutting one way, we're flipping our blade, it's coming back to the same point, we're cutting both directions. A super efficient way to do it, we don't have to roll our material. We don't have to roll the log. Once it's placed on the cribbing, it's set. It's completely done. And this is their biggest mill, so it will cut 10 inch. I can cut up to 10 inch, and 
you know, another you know advantage you might say of the bandsaw mill is well you can you can cut wider stuff yeah you can cut wider stuff but uh I, i've never cut anything bigger than 10 inch with all my years of timber framing and doing my chainsaw mill the biggest thing i've ever cut was a six by ten so that's perfect for me but i'll, I'll show i'll demonstrate nick showed me a clever way that they came up with uh to simply cut a 20 inch beam so the other thing is the way that the carriage uh goes up and down so let's say we have a big log and we're cutting slab you know we're cutting boards across that we get get all the way across we need to lower the mill right so that's done right here with these winches so you can see right here the hand crank is hooked to a drive chain and that's a drive shaft and there's another chain over here you know it's kind of like the old some of the four wheel drive motorcycles or the two wheel drive because motorcycles don't have four wheels and which raises it there. So one crank is lifting both sides. So here's the other clever bit. So this here is called, this gauge is, is called the works. So when this is how we're gonna determine how wide of a board that we wanna cut. Look how simple this is. You loosen the swing nut, right? You slide this over. Let's say we wanna, we wanna cut a four by four. We're, we go to right there to, to four inches, right? Lock it four inches. Lock it down, undo the brake, crank this over just until the metal comes in contact with the gauge. Right there, until it stops. Lock it down, that's it. It's already figured in the kerf, the thickness of the blade. When we run that, we're gonna get exactly a four inch board, whatever we want. And this is pretty cool here, this, this is a repeater. So that's going to say you got a big log and you're going to cut the same thing over and over again. We can slide this lock over, lock it down. Now we have, we're, we're just repeating without, you know, just, it's just saving a step. Just, you go right along, just right along the way and continue cutting. So it came with this toolbox and this is the, this is all the tools that you need to work on it. Super simple. This is the sharpener. Very high quality diamond blade it just clamps right on there they've already figured all the angles everything it's so simple you don't need to have any expertise to be able to sharpen this blade at all um huge huge hugely important thing for me so this is kind of cool this is the slabbing attachment that that bar down there right there that's just basically a gigantic chainsaw blade i don't remember i think uh, nick said you could cut 60 inches so if you wanted to cut a tabletop or huge wood it's just it, it, it's just running your harvester chain it's just basically like a giant chainsaw mill that hooks directly to the engine so you have the ability to do slabbing and really really big stuff as well so here's a stack of some of the uh, lumber that we cut uh, from uh, a grand fir this is all I had some grand fir logs I brought in here these are full dimension we got some two by sixes and two by fours uh, we got some one buys, you know, whatever, just w whatever was the best yield. But you can see, you can kind of see the finish. It's a little bit different than a, circ than a bandsaw blade. And you have these, uh, let me pan you down here. You have these, uh, you can see the saw marks in there. But a really nice finish. That would be really cool for timber framing. Um, I've got some, I, I just can't wait to get started. I can't tell you how excited I am. But I think that looks cool. It, you know, it looks like it's stre stre straight out of the sawmill. But man, uh, you can cut very accurate because of the, the, of the circular blade. Um, I would say, I would even argue more accurate from what I've read than you can with a bandsaw mill. So this is really cool here. So this, these winches here are how you change the depth of the cut. So once, once you cut across your log and you want to lower everything, you need to lower these two frames. So you've got two winches, front, front and back. And the neat thing about it is that these winches are connected. This top bar here is actually a drive shaft. There's a chain that goes down there and controls that side. So by cranking this one winch, you're raising both rails at the same time. So you can see here, these are the, it's called the, the works. So you have this uh, uh, gauge system right here that just sits on a magnet and you zero that out. And whatever you want to cut, let's say we want to cut a four inch or a six inch. We simply crank, hold that lever down, crank it down, front and back, until it matches that. And that's what you're cutting. Super portable, super lightweight. The whole thing can be loaded up. And I'd say I probably had the whole thing broken down and loaded up once with a little practice in about 10 to 15 minutes and down the road on the, on the truck. Uh, if you have a giant, massive log, there's just no limit 
uh, to what size material you can cut, you know, which is also very different than a bandsaw mill. If you can fit it between these rails, you know, you can essentially cut it. Nick was telling me that they cut uh, uh, huge redwoods uh, down in the California that were so big that they had to raise the mill up. They set the mill up on top of 55 gallon drums to get it up to the height they wanted. He was actually walking on the, on the cedar tree uh, as they were cutting, just so, so versatile. These right here are the extensions. Uh, so with the extensions on this rail, on the main rails there, this will cut a 20 foot timber plus trim. As it sits right now, it'll cut a 16 foot timber plus trim. And, and I mean, to be honest, I mean, I just don't need ever that I could think of, unless I was doing something really special, need to cut anything bigger than 16. Um, but uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's really all that I need. This tank here is for water, that's for cooling the blade. So that's, uh, I mean, that's it. It's, it's, you can pretty much see how it works. It's, I, I, I just wanted to, I, there's been a lot of people asking about it. I, I told you this was coming. Um, I didn't have time to, to do any videoing when we were doing the milling because I really wanted to take advantage of, of paying attention to Nick and he had so much experience and knowledge in this that I, I just didn't want to miss any of it because um, I had such a great opportunity to, to, to learn from him. But uh, next time we'll do, be doing the um, we'll be doing the milling and it'll become more clear. But I I just couldn't be happier. I mean it's just one of those things that uh, seeing these at the trade show and 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 reading them and I've been on the forums and I've you know I've, I've watched almost every video on YouTube. I knew it was going to be really good and I was pretty certain it was going to be a good fit for me. It, it just exceeded my expectations. Um, and you'll see when we start cutting. We have. You know, I was going to cut most of this for, <laughs> I was going to cut a pan up here, most of this for firewood, but after having the mill here, uh, I'm starting to look at this, these really nice saw logs very differently. So I'm going to cut a bunch of timber out of them. We'll do firewood. We'll do everything. We got, we got lots of, lots of fun. Everybody's going to get a chance to, to, <clears throat> to see what they like, but I, I wanted to give you a quick preview and show you that. And, and I just couldn't be any more excited. And thanks. Thank you to Nick uh, from Bailey's for bringing that up. Um, we are, uh, we're just going to have a ball, just going to have a ball. All right. Well, thanks for watching and, uh, look for some sawmill coming, sawmilling coming up very, very soon.